Hey everyone, this is Mr. Dunkel. I just want to share with you a couple of things here that we're going to be doing today. When you go into class content, we'll go into our expose holiday celebrities tell all folder. And once we're inside there, you're going to see a new folder that says playbill assignment and our Tennessee standards that that's related to. Now, when you go into playbill assignment, you will see that there is a template. I have an example here, so you can click on that to open the example. And basically, you're going to create a playbill where you're going to add your own graphic, some information in here. And so let's take a look at what it is you're going to be doing. So right underneath playbill example is playbill template and instructions. So you're going to want to click that. It will download into your downloads folder, then open it. And I suggest that you save it somewhere good and secure. So <clears throat> when you open it up, it'll look like this. And what you'll notice is I basically have two PowerPoint slides. And what these will be is if we print them, I will print them front to back. So they'll be on one sheet of paper. And then when you fold them, this will be the title page over here. This will be the back page. And then this is the inside left and inside right. So I just want to point out a couple quick things here for you. I went ahead and uh, gave you Playbill MJHS Auditorium, but you'll need to put your performance date. Right here, you're going to get rid of this text. So this is just a text box. You're going to take it out, and you're going to put an image here uh, that is reflective of our play. And then you need to have the title of the play. So you'll probably want to come in and insert a uh, text box or smart art or something of that nature so that you do have the title of the play here. At the bottom, you need to put by, and you need to put the playwright's name, so the author of our play. Again, if you look at the example that I have, uh, sorry, it's actually up on here. If you look at the example right here, this is of a play that, that I actually wrote called When Love Comes to Town. So I have a image that's kind of reflective of that. It's a high school play where a new girl comes to school and it creates all sorts of chaos at the school. And then by, in, the, in my case, I'm the playwright, so my name here. So that's what we're looking for there. Now, on the back page, you're going to notice uh, that on here, what I want you to do is I want you to list your name, which you're going to bold and then put a comma, and then the roles that you're playing in this play. Below that, you are going to list any experience that you've had in acting. And if you haven't had experience, you list that as well, that this is your first performance and you're excited about playing in these roles and things of that nature. But you're, regardless, you're going to have a, a basic paragraph here. Below that, I want you to, sorry, let me go back. I want you to add an advertisement for something. I don't care what it is that you want to advertise. But I want you to have a little ad at the bottom, but come up with a slogan or a little tagline that is related to drama or to theater. So again, if we go back here, you'll notice I did an iPhone, capture the drama of life on your iPhone. So can't use mine, you have to come up with something different. Now on the second page, which will be the inside of your playbill, what we're gonna do on the left side is you're going to uh, first you're going to summarize what the play's about. It's really important when you summarize the play that you make it intriguing, that people are like, ooh, this is something I want to see, but you do not give away any critical plot points. Don't tell us who the killer was. Don't tell us what happens at the end. Don't tell us any of the climatic scenes. So again, back uh, at my example, you'll notice here I have a little summary talking about how Liz was kind of the queen of the school till this new girl shows up. Life will never be the same when love comes to town. Okay. The next thing that you're going to do down below is I want you to list the scenes of the play. I've given you an example with a couple of the scenes you'll need to keep going and complete all 12 scenes. So what I want you to do is number them and bold them like the big three. And then in the line below that, you're going to list the roles and you're going to italicize them. They're not going to be bolded. Oh, also notice that we have uh, scenes in all caps and underline here centered in this section. So let me show you a quick little trick. When you start uh, doing a numbered list in PowerPoint, oftentimes it wants to automatically number for you. So for instance, here's my cursor. If I hit enter, it's going to go ahead and start number three. So let's see, number three is I think Easter, excuse me. Easter Bunny and Chap 
Now, you'll notice one thing that has happened here. It's just continuing the italics. So I'm going to need to go back here and highlight that. Turn off italics, but I do want to bold it. Okay. But here's the trick I want to show you. If I hit enter again, it is going to go ahead and keep numbering and it's going to do a four. So instead of that, I'm going to keep my cursor here at the very end. And instead of hitting enter by itself, I'm going to hold the shift key down and hit enter. If I do a shift enter, it takes it to the next line without uh, starting a new number. So here I can do Easter bunny, moon, beam, and sky. Again, I'll need to come back, take off the bold, but I'll italicize. And I just used my keyboard shortcut there, which was Control B for bold and Control I for italicize. So you simply repeat that process. Over here on the right, you'll notice that what we're going to do here is we're going to list the uh, cast list. Now you'll notice in the example that I have, it does say cast at the top. Uh, with an underline on it. And then you're going to list the name of the cast all the people in the cast on the left, and then you're going to have dot, 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 and the roles that they play. Now, in our case, they're going to be playing multiple roles. So you'll have one person, dot, 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 and you'll list all the roles that they play. So you're going to need to uh, find out, you know, who who's playing what roles. And we have a lot of that in Blackboard. So if you go to Blackboard and you go back to our main uh, folder for holiday celebrities, you'll see a list here. But I recommend what you need to do is go to each person and just ask them, Connor, what roles are you playing? Santa is one, Leprechaun. The reason I say that is because we've had a few changes probably since we originally made that matrix. So just double check with everyone and make sure you have the right ones. Now, here's a trick I want to show you. <clears throat> You're going to need to put these dots so that the roles are right justified. Notice how counselor ends about the same spot that Sylvia ends. So we're justified on our left and we're justified on our right. So here's the way to do it. That I think is probably the easiest. Put the person's name. So let's just say it's me. Okay. And you'll notice uh, these parts are italicized. So it kept that italic. So I need to get rid of that. So I want to take off the italics here. But what I recommend doing, do a few dots, not many, and then go ahead and type the role. So let's say I'm playing the role of Moonbeam. Now, what I'm going to do, what I recommend doing is put your cursor back in the middle of the dots and then just keep typing some dots until you get near the end. When you start getting to the end, just go one by one and wait until it takes you to the next line and then hit your backspace or delete key one time and that brings you back. Now you can move to the end, hit enter, do the next person. So that's all there is on that. Let me take those off. Okay. Uh, again, if you go back and look, you know, make reference or check every now and then the Playbill example that I have so you can kind of see what it needs to look like. I had a little bit of space at the end, so I just put in a little flourish to just give it a decorative element. Once you're finished with all that, what you're going to do is before you turn it in, you are going to swap computers with a friend or classmate and they are going to critique it. And you're going to do the same for theirs. You're going to use this rubric and critique form. I will have a printed one for you and you're going to go through each part and you're going to grade them, so to speak, and then let that uh, give it back to the person so they can make any final changes before they turn it in. And to turn it in, go to turn in assignments here. You'll see an assignment for Playbill and just upload your completed uh, Playbill. So that's all there is to it. Please read the directions. Everything's covered pretty well, but hopefully that'll help you as well with some of these tips. And of course, if you have questions after reading all that, feel free to ask me. All right. Thank you very much.